22 is a pretty tough question. It's a strengthening question, which I'm following if true, the answer choice is that is, if true, most strongly supports the hypothesis. So, you know, we talked about this in our core science lessons about, um, you know, the, the framework of science, hypothesis, phenomenon supporting, uh, supporting a certain story that you tell to explain the phenomenon which I guess is a little bit down here. Uh, the certain story you tell to explain the phenomenon is, is called a hypothesis. So really, you know, the analogous relation is premise-conclusion relationship, right? So um, strengthening, right? Make it somehow, like, add an additional fact to this story here so that our hypothesis makes more sense, right? The uh, conclusion is, in other words, more strongly supported by the premises. Okay, so you got to identify the conclusion, which this sense is the word here. So anyway... So what's the story? What's going on? Um, because the native salmon in Lake Clearwater had nearly disappeared, right? The native salmon, whatever type of salmon those were. We introduced sockeye salmon back in 1940. Okay, so like, let's say this is our lake. It's clear. It's called Clearwater. Okay, so after being introduced, uh, this genetically uniform group of sockeye split into two distinct populations that do not interbreed. Right, so when initially they were genetically uniform, right now they have two distinct populations that don't interbreed. One inhabiting the deep areas of the lake, the other the shallows. Right, so this is the deeps. Uh, these are the shallows. Right, S for shallow, D for deep. So now th that's where you, you you'll find the two groups of salmon. Uh, just just pretend the pink dots are like salmon. So um, okay, so since the two populations now differ genetically, see remember they were in when they were introduced in 1940, they were genetically uniform. Now they split into d d these two distinct groups that do not breed with each other. Right, their genes don't get mixed back. If they kept like getting big mixed back in, they did sort of breed together always, all the time. Then it, they they wouldn't be genetically. They would just be genetically uniform, like they were when they were introduced. Right, so now they're genetically different, and this is where this is where the story ends. This is where the phenomenon ends. Right, this is the last bit of the premise, so to speak, the um, phenomenon. Now they chose to use the since. A grammatical construction to give us our conclusion. They didn't have to. They could have just, you know, I don't know, uh, capitalized this T over here, added a period over here, right? And then tossed in a therefore. Therefore, some researchers hypothesized. That wouldn't have changed a thing, right? Oh, I guess you need to capitalize the S. So, right, so that's, this is our story. That These are the phenomenon. Now, here comes the hypothesis, right? This is the hypothesis. Well, like, before you read this, what, what do you, if I just asked you, hey, you know, play scientist here, play, play biologist, right? What, what story would you tell to explain how come when they were introduced in 1940, right, they were genetically uniform, now they split into two distinct groups, one like the shallows, one like the deeps, and now, and they don't interbreed, and now they're genetically different. Tell me, explain this to me. Why? How, how are they genetic? Well, one scientist comes in and says, hey, listen, uh, maybe it's because they adapted genetically to their distinct habitats, right? Like the shallows maybe have uh, evolutionary pressures, competition for food. I don't know where, maybe the prey hide somewhere else. And maybe the deeps have different ev evolutionary pressures. Maybe you need, um, I don't know, better eyesight, a higher sensitivity light because less light penetrate the deeps, right? Here you need, I don't know, because the water's not as dense. You need like pectoral fins that are designed to serve. So I, I mean, I don't know. Right, like you can see that this is not like a crazy hypothesis, right? But it's just one hypothesis. How about a competing hypothesis? Like, what if remember those like native salmon that like nearly disappeared? What if the ones that remained have only survived in the shallows, right? Or maybe I should use a different color. Let's let's say these are the greens, so like the the uh, native salmon, right? What if they only survive in the shallows? What if they sort of interbred a little bit? What if their genes got into got mixed in with uh, these guys' genes? Isn't that a very compelling alternative hypothesis to tell about how come now you look at it and you're like, oh, their genes are different. Well, yeah, no shit, they're different. Like, they've been interbreeding with these alien, or I guess these are the indigenous salmon. You, you guys are the alien salmon, right? But that's why they're different. See, I mean, I just made, it didn't have to be in the shallows, right? The same thing could have happened in the deep, right? What if, oh, what if the native remaining salmon were just living in the deep, right? What if they were interbreeding, right? Then, of course, their genes would be different than their genes. And you don't have to appeal to, like, uh, environmental differences. In fact, there could be no environmental differences, right? Lake Clearwater, guess what? What you call the shallow and what you call the deep, they're actually pretty much the same, right? No different evolutionary pressures. But that, but despite that, so, so that would totally wreck your hypothesis, right? But despite that, you can still explain why the genes are different because they've just been interbreeding. So given that this is not a weakening question, you don't want to support this. Given that this is a strengthening question, you just deny it, right? Neither of the two populations has interbred with the native salmon. 
See that re- that just like no, at least this this didn't happen, right? Yeah, maybe you're clever. Maybe you can come up with some other hypothesis that also is competing that also doesn't tell this story, right? But at the very least, you've answered the question out of these five answer choices. All of which are four of which are irrelevant, by the way. Right, this is the one that most strongly supports our researchers' hypothesis. So it's a very standard form、uh, LSAT question that uses causation logic, that uses、uh, phenomenon hypothesis. But you see, I think the what makes this question difficult is you have no idea what you're even trying to do at the end of it. Right, if by the end of it you had a sense of like, okay, you know, this is a story they're telling. I need to somehow make the, the, these facts plus one of the answer choices more compelling to this story, right? Then, then A might have made some sense, and the others would have more obviously made no sense. Like, look at B for example. Back when the native salmon weren't endangered, right? They comprised two distinct populations that didn't interbreed. Okay, so they also live in the shallows and deeps. Like, how is that? See, if you didn't know what you were trying to do, then yeah, I guess that sounds kind of wrong.、You're、like, oh, okay, back then we also had shallows and deeps. But like what? So like, are they were were they genetically different when they lived in the shallows and deeps? Right. If they were genetically different, and you were able to show me that they were genetically different because of the different evolutionary pressures exerted on them from living in the shallows versus living in the deeps, then maybe this has some relevance to this, right? It's like, oh, look, look at those other species. They also. Uh, or affected,、uh, adapted genetically to their distinct habitats. Well, then maybe that makes more sense for this, right? But just telling me they lived in shallows and deeps, I don't know. Maybe they were genetically the same while living in the shallows and deeps. In which case, B becomes a weakening answer choice instead of strengthening, right? So it's. It's very at this point, just you're stating something totally irrelevant. C says most types of salmon that inhabit lakes. I mean, this is like all right, most types of salmon. Just imagine the world of salmon, right? Okay, now carp, carp the entire world. Okay,、uh, just more than fifty percent, right? Most of them. You're gonna tell me about something about most of them? Wow. D is a D, D is a really interesting one. It, one of the population is actually like one of them, right? Whichever one it is, I, I, let's just say this one doesn't matter.、Uh, is virtually identical to the sockeye originally. So basically, they're、uh, D is saying、uh, this. You know, we already know they're genetically distinct, right? Like that's something we already knew from this. D is just telling us that one of them didn't change. So in other words, it was only like this one that changed their genes. Or, or like I don't know, or this one didn't change. It was only this one that changed their genes, right? Okay, that tells me nothing. Like I already knew they were genetically different. You telling me that only it was there because you know. Uh, d- genetically different could have occurred in many different ways, right? You could have changed this way. You could have changed this way. Both of you guys changed. That would be genetically different. You could have stayed、uh, constant, and you change ev- any which way you want, and that would be different. Or alternatively, you stay constant, and you change any which way you want, and that's that's also. Different. So those are at least the three different. I think those might be logically the only three different ways、uh, for genetic dif- for for two groups to become genetically distinct. But you're just telling me like, oh, and by the way, you remain constant. Okay, I still don't know why they're different, right? You said we we still struggle to come up with a story of how come they're genetically different, right? D does absolutely nothing, and E is even more worthless.、Uh, the total number of so- sockeye is not as large as an eight. Okay, right? Like, what does that mean? They're what three short? Three salmon short of whatever the high number of、uh, sockeye, or ra- rather the native was back in its peak. I I don't know what you're doing.